Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial. In this one I'll be showing you how to build a very simple and very reliable frosted ice highway generator. This is mainly used for extremely fast and reliable boat transportation and is really quite useful for the end dimension and also the overworld as well. There are several different reasons why you might want to build this. It's extremely quick to get from the main island out to the end city islands, only taking about 30 seconds by boat. It's great for transporting shulkers back to the main island and therefore getting them to the overworld as well. And it also bypasses the end city gateways, which have a lot of problems on the Bedrock Edition, specifically in 1.9. If you're not aware of those issues, please do go watch my Bug Rock of the Week episode on that because you might actually accidentally corrupt your world just by using one of those gateways. Really, really very broken in this update. So hopefully you can all get a ton of use out of these Frosted Ice Highway Makers. They're extremely simple to build once again and honestly quite fun to use as well. So this is a fully automatic system just using two very small flying machines as you can see here. The one in the front here is simply to make a four wide band of infinite water sources going along until it hits either an unloaded chunk or until you stop it or otherwise, you know, break the machine. And then this one right here is simply to frost all the ice. So this armor stand is wearing a pair of Frostwalker 2 boots. It's going to get bounced around and flung forward and pushed back all the time. And it's going to turn all of this water right here into frosted ice. We then have some pistons on the side here to bring up the guardrails on the sides. And that is pretty much all there is to it. You can also build this entire system before you ever defeat the Ender Dragon, as I have done in the episode 4 of Truly Bedrock. It's honestly quite the fun experience, and uh, if you're up for it, would totally suggest doing that in your world, because you kind of bypass everything, you don't do anything proper, but it's a fun way to get out to the outer and city islands. So how you start this machine is simply by placing a button on that guy's face. That's just gonna go ahead and launch that entire machine and create all of the infinite water sources across the top there. And then we can go ahead and place a button on the back of this machine. And that's just gonna go ahead and frost all of that ice as you can see there. It's also going to bring up the guardrails on the back side, which is pretty lovely as well. And this will just keep on going until it hits an unloaded chunk or again until you stop the machines. It's really quite nice and very very simple in that there is a little bit of a bug that somehow generates two layers of water sources so underneath this entire thing is actually a layer of water sources and that is why we're building this down at the bottom of the world so that all of this water does not lag out your game from flowing and spreading it's actually kind of nice because if there was for some reason a failure or if someone melted or broke some of this ice you would actually just fall into that water and then you would not go into the void which is also very nice and also by having the flying machine down at this low in the world you actually go right underneath all of the end city islands so you'll never hit an island because they do not generate this low in the world which is also another really awesome little feature of this design so now that you know everything that you need to know about this entire system let's actually get into building it so of course you're going to want to go down to the bottom of the world I would suggest it's somewhere around a Y5, and I also went fairly far away from the island just because there's dragons over there. Don't really want to mess with them. Kind of chaotic. But we're going to start off with building the main uh, water source generator on the front here. So start off with, a, you know, two blocks on the left and a pad of four slime blocks on the back side. We want another slime block right there with a stair right there and a slab right there as well. Go behind this, and then we need a sticky piston facing forward just like so, slime block behind it, and another sticky piston right there. So now go above the slime block and place an observer facing upwards right there. And go off to the side of this piston and place three blo slime blocks right there, and you want one more observer facing upwards just like so. So now you should have a flying machine that looks just like this, and we're going to work on the right side of the water generator now. So we need four blocks in those locations there, and four more slime blocks in the back side, just like that. We now want to go ahead and place a stair right there and a slab right there as well and finish it off with two slime blocks in the back corner. Now we need to install our engine and what you want to do for this is place a piece of obsidian right in front of this machine so it doesn't, you know, break anything. You want an observer facing forward right there and one sticky piston behind that. Go up by a couple blocks right there and you want an observer and then one normal piston right there. Go ahead and remove that block 
And that is your entire water making machine ready to go. What you can do now is go ahead and waterlog that slab, waterlog that stair, waterlog this one and this one as well. And honestly, you can just go ahead and fill up this entire platform with water sources as well. I found that that makes this machine a lot more reliable, at least at the beginning of its water path making. So now what you also want to go ahead and do is remove the platform underneath it. How you do this is going to be up to you. It might be in your best interest to go ahead and swim it down this water stream right here. But either way, maybe take everything out of your inventory because doing this over the void, always scary and typical to die in that situation. One small derp right here, you actually need to move this observer one block to the left. That way it actually gets dragged along with the rest of your machine. So now we need to go ahead and build up our little X-Wing in the back here, and we're just going to go about five or six blocks behind this main machine and line yourself up with the third block from the right and pillar up by three blocks. We want to go ahead and place a line of four slime blocks just like so, a piece of obsidian here on the front, observer on top of that, sticky piston behind it, and then an upside down stair right there. Make sure that that stair is in that exact orientation. Otherwise, your armor stand will be able to glitch through the entire front of your machine and fly off into the void. They're, they're very, very buggy. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that stairs in that exact orientation. We now want a sticky piston right here, two slime blocks like that, and then a normal piston facing forwards right there. Go ahead and branch out by a couple blocks on the backside. Place an observer facing towards the rear of the machine, and then you also want to go ahead and get an observer facing upwards right on top of that block. Now what we need to do is build the little wings to the side of this that are actually going to be bringing up your guardrails. So we need a block right there with a sticky piston facing downwards just so. And then get yourself one observer in front of that to actually power it and bring up your guardrail. We need to do the same thing on this side but it's super simple because all you need is one sticky piston right there. And that is both, your, both of your guardrails actually installed. So now what you can do is go ahead and just remove that pillar and install your armor stand as well. Your armor stand is going to be going right there on that block and you're just going to go ahead and put a pair of Frostwalker boots on it. Frostwalker 2 is recommended and of course these can be any kind of boots. They do not need to be diamond boots or anything like that. Just make them iron, make them chain, make them golden, whatever you want to do as long as they have Frostwalker 2 on them. And that's all there really is to your flying machines. What you can do now is go ahead and remove the obsidian that is in front of these machines that prevent them from flying. And once you're ready to actually activate them, just go ahead and place like a lever or a button on the face of that observer and one on the face of that observer as well. And that will completely launch your flying machines and start making a wonderful little ice highway for you to boat along. So again, you can kind of just like maybe hop up onto the side of this if you feel like riding along with it. That is generally pretty safe. Or you can just grab yourself a boat and just kind of follow along behind this thing. And again, these boat pathways are very, very fast. So you really only need to tap forward like once every 10 or so blocks because uh, if you tap forward just a little bit too much, you'll actually glitch through that entire flying machine and fly into the water that's in front of it and then have a very bad time so be aware of that you don't want to do that so once you ride this thing all the way out to the in city islands you're probably going to be wondering how you can actually stop this thing well it's pretty simple and straightforward you just place a piece of obsidian right there and that will kind of stop this flying machine and then what i would suggest doing is just letting that one run until it hits a chunk border uh it will run into an unloaded chunk and then just pretty much just stop and once it hits that unloaded chunk, it'll just completely stop. You can go ahead and grab these boots, chuck them on, and then Frostwalker the rest of this. Or you can run that machine for a little bit longer to actually bring up these guardrails. Uh, as you can see, if you let it actually run into this machine, it'll just, you know, stop itself. It'll, of course, all be broken, but you can, of course, do that as well. Whatever you want to do. In case you're wondering how to restart this machine after placing the obsidian, just go ahead and remove that obsidian, place a lever on top of there, and then this thing will start going again. And that'll just keep on going until it either hits that machine or you stop it again. So I hope you all get a ton of use out of this simple and basic ice highway generator. I have plans to make a much bigger and much more advanced ice highway generator in a couple of weeks so hopefully you guys will see that on the channel sometime soon i think you're really gonna like that ice highway generator as well if you do enjoy this one however that is going to do it for this tutorial i hope you all did enjoy if you did then please do leave a like on the video it really does help out the channel and the video a lot so thank you very much for doing so if you're new here consider subscribing and i will see you all down in the comment section and in the next one 
Thank you very much for watching. And then there was silence.